Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Med, where medicine is explained quickly and easily. Today we will be discussing Graves' disease, going over pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, as well as treatment, so let's get to it. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend watching our previous video on thyroid hormone synthesis where we discuss T3 and T4 as well as the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid access. It'll make much more sense before we start talking about Graves' disease. Graves' disease is actually the most common cause of hyperthyroidism. It is an autoimmune disease, and this is because it is caused by antibodies that are directed against the TSH receptor, also known as a thyrotropin receptor. These antibodies are actually stimulatory, and so they lead to thyroid hormone synthesis as well as thyroid gland growth, which leads to an enlargement of the thyroid gland, also known as goiter. And in these images here, you can see what goiter looks like. And interestingly, goiter, as well as Graves' ophthalmopathy, which we'll discuss later, are pretty characteristic findings of Graves' disease and so can help distinguish Graves' disease from other forms of hyperthyroidism. Patients will present with palpitations, increased sweating or heat intolerance, weight loss, diarrhea, anxiety, or a fine tremor, which you can often see with an outstretched hand, and insomnia. Signs of Graves' disease include tachycardia, hypertension, dyspnea, and arrhythmias, most notably atrial fibrillation. To help you remember these signs and symptoms, it's good to know that hyperthyroidism is actually associated with an increased number of beta-adrenergic receptors, and so you get an enhanced sympathetic response, which can explain many of these findings. Now let's discuss Graves' ophthalmopathy, which, as we discussed earlier in the video, is highly characteristic of Graves' disease, as it is found in virtually no other form of hyperthyroidism. This is where you get proptosis or bulging of the eyes as well as periorbital edema so that you have some swelling surrounding the eye as well. It's important to distinguish this ophthalmopathy from lid lag which is found in other forms of hyperthyroidism and this is where the upper eyelid remains higher than normal when the eyes are looking downward. This is a result of increased sympathetic activity which leads to tightness of the levator palpebrae which is the muscle of the eyelid that is responsible for opening the eyelid. Another finding is pretibial myxedema, and this is where you have bilateral, asymmetric, and non-pitting skin thickening along the legs, but can also be found in other areas as well. This finding is not as common these days now that we are diagnosing and treating Graves' disease much earlier than before. So what are the lab findings that would lead us to think of Graves' disease or to think of some hyperthyroid state? So this is where you really need to understand the underlying pathophysiology in order to determine what the lab findings will be. So as we said, in Graves' disease, you have antibodies that stimulate the TSH receptor, causing the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. So what you'll have is an excess of T4 and T3, which are your thyroid hormones. This leads to negative inhibition and causes TSH to decrease. And because iodine uptake is responsible or necessary for thyroid hormone synthesis, iodine uptake will also be increased here as well in order to keep up with all the thyroid hormone that the thyroid gland is producing. Before we keep going on, let's take a moment to answer this quick little quiz. Here we're looking at various images of radioactive uptake scan results, with A being what the normal thyroid gland should look like. Which of the images shown here would be a finding in a patient with Graves' disease? Take a moment to pause the video to think this over, and then we'll talk about the answer. So the answer here is B. In a radioactive iodine uptake test, a patient takes radioactive iodine oftentimes by mouth, and then the thyroid gland will be measured to see how much of that radioactive iodine it actually takes up. In Graves' disease, we said that iodine uptake will go up in general because the thyroid is trying to produce an excess amount of thyroid hormone, and so if a patient were to take radioactive iodine, the thyroid gland will homogeneously take up that iodine as a result. And this is what you see here in B. Note how it's a much darker compared to A, which is a normal thyroid gland, because it's taking up much more iodine than what a normal thyroid gland would. We'll discuss the other images and where you'll find these findings in another video, so stay tuned for that. So how do we treat Graves' disease once we diagnose it? There are actually three mainstay forms of therapy, and you can break this down into antithyroid drugs radioiodine therapy, as well as surgery. Surgery involves removing the thyroid gland completely, and the patient will have to take thyroid hormone supplements for the rest of their life, and this is surgery is known as a thyroidectomy. Radioiodine therapy is where the patient takes radioactive iodine, and this induces ablation of the thyroid tissue. And finally, we have our antithyroid drugs, which include methimazole and propylthiouracil, or PTU. Methimazole works by blocking thyroid peroxidase, which as you remember is key for thyroid hormone synthesis. PTU also blocks thyroid peroxidase, but it also inhibits deiodination, which is where T4 is converted to T3 as you remember. 
Methamazole is the primary drug used to treat Graves' disease, and this is because it has a lower incidence of side effects, it's more effective, and also has a longer duration of action, which allows it to be dosed once a day. Something that you need to know for boards is that PTU is often preferred during the first trimester of pregnancy, and not really in most other occasions, mainly because methamazole has more teratogenic effects in the first trimester. Now let's talk about a complication of Graves' disease, also known as thyroid storm, and this is high yield for the boards as well. This is a life-threatening condition, and you can think of this as a severe form of thyrotoxicosis. And the recipe for disaster that leads to this is poorly controlled or untreated hyperthyroidism plus some form of acute stress, whether it's infection, trauma, or surgery. In cases of thyroid storm, patients will be acutely ill. They'll have fever, agitation or delirium, diarrhea, possible coma, as well as arrhythmia. Again, this condition is life-threatening, so it is imperative that a patient receives immediate treatment. So what does treatment include? Treatment includes the four main things that you need to keep in mind. Beta blockers, methamazole or PTU, glucocorticoids, and iodine. Beta blockers work by counteracting that increased beta-adrenergic response that we see with excess thyroid hormone production. Methamazole and PTU are the antithyroid drugs that are given to inhibit thyroid hormone synthesis in this case. Glucocorticoids are given because they actually reduce T4 to T3 conversion. They also may have a direct effect on the underlying autoimmune process that we see in Graves' disease. And the final treatment involves giving iodine, and this may seem counterintuitive at first, but this is because of a phenomenon known as the wolf shakeoff effect, which is where you get iodine-induced hypothyroidism or where ingested iodine acutely inhibits thyroid hormone synthesis. You can think of this effect as an autoregulatory phenomenon, where it's an effective means of rejecting large quantities of iodine and preventing the thyroid gland from synthesizing large quantities of thyroid hormone. So basically, you give a large amount of ingested iodine and the patient's thyroid gland pretty much shuts down and stops producing thyroid hormone. All right, everyone, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can support us in continuing to make more videos for you all. And as always, good luck studying everyone.